What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Tyron Johnson Show. My name is Tyron Johnson, and I'm the host. And I drop this podcast every Monday to help inspire, educate, and motivate. Today's topic, we're talking about how you shouldn't let your family hold you back. That's right, your family. It's a touchy subject and a touchy topic that a lot of people don't like to tap into, but I don't have a problem with it because I feel like life is too short to let anything deteriorate our dreams, derail us from our dreams, whatever uh, synonym you want to use. Anything that's getting in the way with us living to our fullest potential, we have to tap into that, figure out what that is, and attack it to eliminate it so that we can get where we got to get to. And unfortunately, the people that's supposed to have your back the most, the people that's supposed to be riding with you, the people that you think believe in you the most, could be your biggest haters. And that's your family. I'm just, just being real. Your family is very dangerous, man. Your family is very dangerous, and I'm going to get into how they're very dangerous and, and, and all the things because they can be very manipulative. I'm getting into all of that, right? They always said that keep your enemies close, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. That's a real, that's a real saying. It's a real truth because that probably came from a successful person. A successful person was probably backstabbed by a family member. Like, it's easier to see the enemy coming because you know the enemy has some type of beef with you. But when you are riding for a person, going hard for a person, you know, when you 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 involving them in everything that you're doing and you think that they have your best interest at hand and that's the person that snake you, you can't see that coming. Because your trust level is so high that you trust them with your deepest, darkest secrets. You're trusting them with your money. You're trusting them with your family. You're trusting them with where you live, your, where you lay your head at at night. That's hard to see, right? That's hard to see. Your friends, your friends can lead you down a dangerous path, right? So this is extended family, still family, but your friends, they're family. They're just extended, right? Your friends can lead you down in a very dangerous path and you have to really find a good group of people that that's aligned with your principles and morals. And I'm going to tell you like this, friendships go through seasons. Everybody can't grow with you. That's why everybody can't go with you, right? Everybody can't grow with you. So that's why everybody can't go with you. Some people you're going to have to have to cut out your life because they're going to always see you for the person that you were 10 years before when you're a total different person today. And I promise you, it's, it, it's not that they're trying to do this. It's just what humans do. Humans just do that. You got friends that have gotten older and they have involved into people that you don't like anymore. You got friends that have turned into, shit, I got friends that have turned into killers. You got friends that have turned into drug addicts, alcoholics, um, gamblers. Like, I'm, that, you're not the person that I was cool with. I just know you. So we're not the same. So we don't have the same relationship, right? I got a friend that I love to death. One of my, I'm talking about love to death. We barely talk today because of a simple misunderstanding and I'm not even trying to help him understand if he can't understand that, right? I'm being open and honest with you guys because if he, if he sees this and he even want to have the conversation, I'm open to it. But guys go through this, so I got to have I gotta have these conversations. We would do things all the time as homies, right? But I don't, I'm not getting in your car, bro. Like, I'll get in an Uber before I get in your car. Because I know what comes with that. I know you driving around with illegal substances. I know you driving around with firearms that might be illegal. At the time, I don't think laws were passed, right? So I'm not getting in your car. But so many guys would have gotten in the car thinking, yo, that's my boy, it's cool. Yeah, until the laws pull y'all over. Until somebody hit y'all in the back, y'all unconscious, they find guns and weed in the car. Like everything you've worked your whole life for, you think you, I'm about to throw it away? For, for, for trying to be cool 
And if you can't understand that, then are you really truly my friend? I'm not even making you uncomfortable. I'm getting an Uber to the spot. I'm finding my own way to get there, right? Because I don't, I don't be having a car in the summer. I rent cars in the summer. But, you know, I'm like, I'm good. I'll get there. I'm just not getting there with you. That don't mean that I, I, I love you any less or I, I think of you any less. It's just, bro, you doing what you want to do. I'm respecting you as a man, respecting me as a man, right? And I guess he felt some type of way. We ain't talk ever since. But some guys can be hurt behind that. But I'm not going to be hurt behind being real. I'm hurt because I love that person to death. Like, but at the end of the day, man, if they don't understand where I'm coming from, fuck them. Straight up. Fuck them. It is what it is. So you, you got to be careful with the, with the company that you keep. You could be hanging with somebody that got beef with a whole nother town. And you out here just chilling and running around and boom. They start shooting. They're shooting at him, but you done got hit. It's just the reality of life, right? Especially in America. This ain't everywhere, but especially in America, right? You got to be careful of the company you keep because family can definitely hold you back, right? Second point, your parents are probably the most dangerous people in your life, right? Your parents are probably the most dangerous people in your life because of the influence that they have on you. Your parents' words is bond. Like, you know, when our parents have raised us, they've fed us, they've clothed us, they've bathed us. They've done all these things for us. So, you know, our parents, they get first dibs on our feelings and our emotions because we spend the most time with them. So their words and their thoughts and their opinions really, truly matter because in some shape or form, they're creating your culture, right? They're creating your principles and your morals. Your first king your first president is your daddy. Your first queen, your first um, first lady is your mom, right? So these people word is law, but their word is also flaw, right? A lot of parents are still living in a time that's not today. And they don't know how to adjust. And they don't know how to understand that the world is changing at a rapid pace in the world that they once lived in it's not the same world that we're living in today so you got to be careful about making your parents word law because when your parent when you say dad i want to be a rapper and your dad said that's impossible dreams killed when you say mom i want to be a basketball player and your mom said get think about getting a real job dreams killed when you say you want to be a barber and they say, oh, barbers don't make no money, dreams killed, right? When I know barbers that's making millions, I know basketball players that's making millions. I know rappers that's making millions or hundreds of thousands. Or 60, 70K from rapping? Bro, it's like you cannot let their fear project onto you. Reason being your mother and your father, your parents, they love you so much that they'll try to protect you so much in the name of being realistic. And whenever you're trying to be great or whenever you're trying to make them pay or do something very, 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 very important, you can't be realistic. When you're trying to be monumental, when you're trying to leave a legacy, you cannot be realistic because it does not make sense to the majority of the people. That's why only 1% of the people accomplish this because it's not supposed to be realistic. You think in a whole different way. You got a whole different way about yourself. You taking advice from a person that's probably overweight, that's probably ain't lived their dreams, that's probably bad with money, that's probably bad with friends. Like these are the people that we're taking advice from. You just got to pay attention to your parents and see them in totality. Now love them, take in the information. But if it's not a line with where you're trying to go at, you got to cut that line off. You don't cut them off, but cut that line off. Meaning what they're saying is coming through one ear, but you're not really processing it. It's going through the other because they're just projecting fear when you trying to be dangerous. That's just how it is. And message to you parents. This is a message to you parents, especially these parents that's in youth sports. Stop it. Y'all are grinding my gears. Stop it. 
A lot of you parents are living through these kids because you was an athlete that you planned on being. So you're going to try to make sure that your child is going to be the athlete that you always wanted to be. A lot of you parents are using these kids as pawns to brag to your friends and families. A lot of, a lot of, you, a lot of you parents are putting so much pressure on these kids that they're not even enjoying the sports anymore. When I go to an AAU basketball game and I hear parents screaming at their kids to the top of their lungs, just their kid, you gotta make that shot, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. The kid confidence is going super low. When I go to a baseball game and I see a kid crying because he heard daddy screaming in the, in the, in the stands and he's acting like it's something happened in the game, nah, he's embarrassed. You parents embarrass these kids, and what it do is it strips the love of the game right out of them. I was blessed to have a mom that was just super quiet. People would talk about me in the stands, all kind of mess up, all kind of stuff. My mom would just be like that for support. She just showed up. I thank her for that because I would I would look at some of my teammates' parents, and I'm like, whoa, how is the how do you even go to sleep with each other that night? Right. So stop it, parents. Please, please, please for me. Stop it. All right. Don't let your family hold you back. Your family is also your community. Trust me when I tell you your community will not support you. Your community will not support you, especially in the beginning. But when you make it. They for sure will claim you. It comes with the territory. It is what it is. Your, your community will not support you. But, it, but when you make it, they will, they will claim you. It comes with the territory, bro. It's like, I would love to give back to my community, right? As much as possible, but it just don't make sense because I don't have no support down there, right? I'm, I'm so disconnected. I want to give back as much as possible. But when I go back, it's like it's no support. A lot of these people are like, why him? You know, when I was trying to be a professional basketball player, they're like, that guy? I'm like, bro, I'm just all state MVP of the, the, my class, went to the championship. Bro, help me out. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> like, you ain't good enough. Right? Like, they'll constantly say, like, you're not good enough. You're not getting a D1 scholarship. Like I had to go out and really go out and really grab my scholarship, bro. I didn't get no interviews. Ain't nobody from the community put me in contact with somebody else from some other place. I literally had to do everything myself. Especially when you come from a small community like where I came from. They won't support you. Even to this day, I do basketball camps. I have to go around the world and do basketball camps which I love and which I want to do because I want to spread my message around the globe. But when I go back home, the support is at zero. But I got friends and family that will take their kids to Alabama, Florida, Tennessee, South Carolina to send their kids to basketball camps where they're just playing. In my basketball camps, we teaching life lessons. We teaching basketball. We teaching entrepreneurship. We teaching so much and we having, so, we having a blast while doing it. And it's way cheaper. I'm doing it at a price that so I don't, you can't have no excuse. You're going to pay for gas money. You're going to pay for hotel money. You're going to pay for food. You're going to pay the fee to go to the camp to somebody that you don't even know. And they're throwing the ball out saying, let's play five on five. But they got a Florida Gator shirt on or something like that. Your community won't support you. But that's no excuse to let them hold you back. Right. You can't let them hold you back. The best thing you can do is love your family. I say it all the time. The best thing you can do is love your people, love your family, love your community, love your friends, love them, but understand that you have to love yourself more. I say that again. The best thing that you can do is love your people, love your family, love your friends, love your community, but you're going to have to love yourself more because at the end of the day, you all you got. A lot of family members are going to try to discourage you from your dreams just so that whenever you fail one time, they say, I told you so. Think about that. 
Your dream is getting discouraged just for a selfish person to say, I told you so. If they're really family, if they really love you, it wouldn't be, I told you so. It would be, what can we do to help? How can we help you get to where you want to get to? What do you need? An ear? Money? Connection? What do you need? But no, I told you so. It's not family. That's a detractor. And I'm telling you, you have a lot of detractors in your family. What you have to understand, though, is when you get rid of your family, not get rid of your family, but when you understand that you have to love yourself more, it's going to come with a lot of heartbreak, a lot of sacrifices, a lot of uncomfortable conversations that most of the people in your family will not understand. But that comes with the territory. I've had to leave my country of origin to go around the world to play basketball to make a living. This was my dream. A lot of my family said, this is stupid. You know, first four or five years, just like, yay. But now I'm 13 years in, they're like, bro, when are you coming back? I'm like, yeah, I miss y'all too, but all right, who's going to pay me like they're paying me over here? Who's going to support me like they're supporting me over here? Nobody. So I got to do what I got to do for me. I miss you guys. I love you guys, but I got to do what I got to do for me. If you're really family, you'll be taking trips over here trying to involve yourself with me. You'll come spend time with me. You'll come spend a week with me. I see my teammates that have their friends and family show up throughout the year. This friend come this month. This friend come this month. Their parents come this month. So you don't never really miss home because somebody's always coming. But you got guys like me. I've had about three or four people visit me in 13 years. And three or four of those visits came this year. <laughs> And that's only because I've been doing these podcasts and I've been speaking and I've been expressing myself like, look, I come home every summer for two or three months and I spend 20, 30 K just to spend time with you guys. Nobody come visit me. I said, how did that make me feel? You guys in Versace, you guys in Louis Vuitton, you guys taking trips to Mexico, you guys taking trips to the Bahamas, but you guys don't never take a trip over here. You got the money, so you can't use that as an excuse. And I got the money, so if you need help, I can give it to you. But no, I'm telling you. Everyone is self-serving, so be careful of the company you keep, even when it's the company that's closest to you, because they can love you, but they still can hold you back. Do not let them hold you back. End of, the, end of this episode, I think that was a good one. <laughs> if this was any value to you, please like and subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends, tell a friend, and tell a friend. And remember, every day, make them pay so that one day you can live a true life. I'm out.